Good afternoon, Elmira Baptist Church. It is Thursday, April 11th, 2024, and this is your update uh, for the week. Joel 2, verse 12 says, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Time is drawing close for our spring conference, and I'm looking forward to that. That's why I picked this verse. Listen to this quote from A.W. Tozer. He said this, Have you noticed how much praying for revival has been going on of late, and how little revival has resulted? I believe the problem is that we have been trying to substitute praying for obeying, and it simply will not work. To pray for revival while ignoring the plain precept laid down in Scripture is to waste a lot of words and get nothing for our trouble. Prayer will become effective when we stop using it as a substitute for obedience. Let me read that last sentence to you again. Prayer will become effective when we stop using it as a substitute for obedience. With this Spring Conference coming up, Revive Us, O Lord, Spring Conference coming up. I want to focus again on this topic of revival, which I will define for you on Sunday, Lord willing. And I'm going to do something a little bit different on Sunday. First of all, I'm going to preach a two-part message. Sunday morning, the title is, It's Time. And that'll be focused on the first half of Isaiah 55. And on Sunday evening, the second part will be, God is faithful, focusing on the second half of Isaiah 55. So if you read uh, Isaiah 55, the whole, the whole passage, you'll be ready for both the morning message, it's time, and the evening message, God is faithful. And then at the end of both messages, I'm anticipating a come forward and pray invitation. Now, not everyone's comfortable with that, I understand and we have a very small sanctuary, which is why I don't give more come forward and pray invitations, because where, where do you pray? But if, if you are led by the Holy Spirit on Sunday to come forward to pray and, and ask the Lord to bless us and ask the Lord to stir us up again, feel free to do that. And just make your way up here and find a spot and, and pray. You can pray right where you're at uh, on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, as we give the invitation Sunday evening. But just want to, to to sort of open that up Open up that door, open up that window, so to speak, so that you can go through it if, if the Spirit leads you. Don't forget, while the Schmitz are here, we're going to be taking a love offering, but you can also give this Sunday to their ministry, and this is what they do. They're full-time. He is a full-time evangelist. She constantly travels with him, and so what the Lord's people give to them is what they have, and I'm glad to be a channel, a conduit for the Lord to provide for this family. Here's some other upcoming events. This Sunday, 1.30 in the afternoon, we'll begin our Grief Share program, 1.30 in the ministry room, this Sunday, Grief Share. Friday, April 19th, is a Star Watch party, 8 o'clock in the evening. We'll meet out here on the, on the pavers, pray for clear skies so we can see the stars and other things we're going to be looking at. That's Friday, April 19th. Of course, Sunday to Sunday, April 21st to the 28th, is the Revive Us, O Lord conference with Tim Schmidt, and Sunday morning, uh, Sunday night, Monday night, separate men and women's meeting. Tuesday night is for teens. That one begins at 5 o'clock. Wednesday night uh, is for everyone. Thursday afternoon is for elementary school children, although, again, teens can come to that. Friday, 7 o'clock, and then again on Sunday morning, food and fellowship, and then the afternoon meeting. That's on the 28th of April. That food and fellowship theme is international favorites. So think of something you can bring that's outside of normal U.S. foods. Sunday, May 5th, is our bake sale, and this is for our camp scholarship program. Uh, you, we need you to sign up to bring something. And when you sign up to bring something, just write down the type of item it is. We don't want everyone to bring the same item, so write down the type of item it is. Bring that on Sunday, May 5th, and then plan to purchase something. Uh, on Sunday, uh, May 5th also, and that money will go to the camp scholarships. You can give to this camp scholarships directly if you'd like. J 
just uh, take an offering envelope or put on your check camp and uh, C-A-M-P, camp, and we'll make sure that that money gets to our camp scholarships. We have, at last count, 13 young people headed to camp. So we've got quite a bit of money to raise, but I know the Lord's going to bring it in. Saturday, May 11th, uh, excuse me, Saturday, May 18th will be the Elmira Baptist Church Ladies event, and there'll be more about that as we get closer to it. Of course, Sunday, May 12th is Mother's Day, and they, we are offering a baby dedication on that day. If you have a child that you would like to dedicate to the Lord, please see me. That's Sunday, May 12th, and also on Sunday, May 12th in the evening, Dan and Jennifer Post will be with us. And I just talked to him on the phone. Praise the Lord. It's exciting to, to meet him. I'm looking forward to meeting him. Exciting for me because that's the first time I've talked with him. Had a lot of email conversations with him, but having a chance to talk to him and hear a little bit of his heart for ministry, I know you will be blessed. That also is Sunday, May 12th. And then on Monday, May 27th, that's Memorial Day, so our Memorial Day picnic. We'll be meeting again at Magnolia Park, Pavilion A, Magnolia Park on May 27th. Also in June, we want to have a graduate recognition night. If you have a graduate, kindergarten, High school or college, we'd like to recognize that graduate. Would you please see me so that I know uh, that you'll be participating in that? That's graduates of kindergarten, high school, or college. In about 11 days, the California Family Council will host California's March for Life, and this will be at the uh, Capitol in Sacramento. We're only about 40 or 45 minutes away from the church. If you're on the other side of town, closer to an hour. A drive from here to the Capitol building. And I want to encourage you to consider if you have that Monday free, that's March, excuse me, that's not March, April 22nd, I want you to consider traveling to the Capitol. Now, I know we're going to be meeting that evening at 7 o'clock. The March for Life uh, begins at noon, and then there's a 1 o'clock rally as well, so a couple of hours there in the afternoon. Should be beautiful weather. It's April, and just showing up shows your support for life here in California, not just before a child is born, but also at the end of life. We're against euthanasia. We are against abortion because we believe that life is precious and that life comes from God. So if you would like to show your support for that, let me encourage you to consider being part of California's March for Life on April 22nd. Keep praying for our building program need to get that building permit and I need to I need to find out where we are on that a lot of the obstacles have been overcome got a few more to go and then uh, secondly pray for this revive us oh Lord spring conference I don't want it just to be a just a conference just so we can say we did it or we had an evangelist in I really want the Lord to stir us up I really want him to burden us for prayer more prayer more fervency when we pray. I want him to stir us up to examine ourselves and, and rid ourselves of sin and rid ourselves of those things that are between us and the Lord so we can have a closer walk with him. Which brings me to Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Remember last week I said that love equals obedience. If you love God, you must keep his commandments. And uh, Tozer mentioned that prayer will become effective when we stop using it as a substitute for obedience. There are a few key pieces as, as we walk with God, as we want to, an effective ministry, so we want to be a church that's salt in our community. We want a church, uh, our church's light to shine brightly in the darkness. A couple of key things. One is prayer. One is definitely obedience. Prayer. You've heard the saying, I'm sure, no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer. Much power. And of course, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Bible says, the Lord will not hear me. He goes on to say in the very next verse, but the Lord has heard me. Which means that the psalmist found a way to find that forgiveness, to 
to confess sin so that there was no sin between him and the Savior, and he could have his prayers heard. And that's what we want as well. We want to turn to the Lord. It says with fasting. That means something is more important than food. Now, very little gets between us and food. <laughs> I mean, we've got so much of it and so many varieties. If you don't like something today, you can find something else to eat. And if you get tired of that, by tomorrow you can have a different meal. But when we get serious about turning to the Lord, suddenly food doesn't have the same hold on us. With weeping and with mourning, we're a, we're a society that's just absolutely fixated on entertainment and laughing and, and fun. But when we turn to the Lord with all our heart, those things will become less important. And what will become more important is seeking the Lord and turning to Him with all our heart. As we turn to the Lord and we become serious about seeking Him, He is going to point out things in our lives that are between us and Him. That's how God works. He's a holy God. And when we try to approach that brightness, that light in which He sits, it reveals the wickedness and the disobedience and the lack of submission in our own hearts, and we have to deal with it. And this is what he says in the next verse, Joel 2, 13, And rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. He is gracious and merciful. God is merciful. As we draw close to him and we see the, the, the sin and the spots from the world. We, we need to just confess it. God is merciful. We need to be honest with him. Tell him where we've been and, and what we've seen and what we've done and what we've said. And, and confess the sin in our lives and then receive that mercy and forgiveness from his hand. And then get a little bit closer and then a little more light. So we see a little bit more of the problems and just keep confessing. Keep drawing close to him. That's my goal during our this month of April. Whether it's my preaching, Brother Smith's preaching, your personal time with God, don't neglect that. Your time with God. Ask him to open up your heart to truth. Your time with him. The preaching this Sunday. The preaching while the Schmitz are here. And then as your heart opens up to a holy God and that light shines in and you find areas that need to be confessed. Be quick to confess them, receive God's forgiveness, His mercy, and move on. Join us this Sunday. Don't forget to read Isaiah 55. We're going to meet at 9.45 for Sunday school, 11 o'clock for morning worship, and 5 o'clock for evening worship. Join me in praying that God will be at work in our hearts in this month of April, and then I'll see you on Sunday.